Hi guys! This is Mama Lu. Welcome back to my YouTube channel! Today we're going to talk about translating verbal phrases into algebraic expressions. When you translate verbal phrases to algebraic expression, it is important to look for words that indicate number operations. Okay, so let's look at the verbal phrases written here on the board. So these are the phrases that we are going to translate into algebraic expressions. Okay, so the first one. The sum of five and a number. So we're going to look for the word that indicate number operation. The sum of five and a number. So the word that indicate a number operation is the word sum. Okay? So the other one, nine more than a number. So the word that indicate number operation is more than okay next example we have a number plus two okay so the word that indicate a number operation is plus okay so the three underlined words sum more than and plus suggest what operation okay very good so these words indicate addition and if it is addition, we will use the plus sign in our algebraic expression. So let us now translate this verbal phrase, the sum of five and a number. So if we represent the number as x, so we write this as five, the sum, okay, five, plus x okay so that's how we represent this phrase the sum of a no five and a number to algebraic expression as five plus x okay the other one nine more than a number more than a number Let's say we represent the number here as N. Again, we may use any letter. We may use X. We may use N, B, C, D, E, F, G, any letter. No, we may use any letter to represent the number. Okay, 9 more than a number. Okay, so we write it as... Since more than represent addition, so we write that as n plus 9. It's 9 more than a number. Okay, the other one, a number plus 2. So we have here the word plus that indicates addition, okay? So, if we represent a number, now, now, we represent a number as B, okay? Let's use B to represent a number. So, a number, so that is B plus 2, okay? Okay, so now let's have the next examples. The difference of 8 and a number. Okay, 10 less than a number. And then the third, 12 minus a number. So we look for words that indicate number operation. So for the first one, we have the difference. Okay, so difference. Next, 10 less than a number. So this one is less than. Okay, and for the third, 12 minus a number so it's minus so the underlined words here indicate okay very good subtraction so, 
Okay, so if this indicates subtraction, so therefore we are going to use the minus sign in our algebraic expressions. Okay, so let's translate the first one. The difference of 8 and a number. Okay, again, if we represent the number as x, so the difference, so using the minus sign of 8, so we have 8 minus the number, so 8 minus x. Okay, so for the second one, 10 less than a number. If, again, if we represent this number as c, okay, let's represent that number as c. So 10 less than, so our minus sign, a number. 10 less than a number. So we have C minus 10. Okay? Now, some students tend to be confused here. Na ginagawa nila, if we have 10 less than a number, they write 10 first and then minus the number. So since this is 10 less than a number, less than, less than a number so you have to write a number then the number first then the operation and then 10 so it's c minus 10 okay then the third 12 minus a number okay let's represent this number as b so 10, 12 minus a number so we have 12 minus d Okay, so more verbal phrases here. We have the product of 3 and a number. Next, 7 times a number. And then the third, a number multiplied by 4. Okay, so let's look at the words that indicate number operation. So for the first one, the product of 3 and a number, we have product. Okay, second one. 7 times a number, we have times, okay? And then for the third one, a number multiplied by 4. Okay, we have multiplied. So obviously, these words indicate, okay, multiplication. Okay, so if they indicate, or if these words indicate multiplication, so we can use this sign, so that sign for multiplication, or we can just write the number and the variable, so it is also, uh, it also suggests multiplication. We avoid using this symbol for multiplication because it might be confused with the variable, okay? So, let's have the first one. Let's translate the product of 3 and a number. If we represent the number as x, so product, we have 3 times x. Or simply, we can write as 3x. Okay? So, that means 3 times x or 3x, the product of 3 and a number. Okay, the other one, 7 times a number. Again, let's represent that number by E. So, we have 7 times a number. So, it's 7 E. Okay? Next, a number multiplied by 4. So, a number. Okay, let's represent this number as F. A number multiplied by 4. Okay, so we have 4F. Okay, a number multiplied by 4. So, um, some of you might think that it should be F, a number multiplied by, uh, multiplied by 4. But if you have a constant and a variable, you write the constant first. So, it should be 4F. Okay? So, that's 
a number multiplied by 4. Okay, below we have the, co the quotient of a number and 3. And then the second one, 4 divided by a number. So the words that indicate number operations are, for the first one, we have quotient. Okay, for the second one, we have divided by. Okay, so these words indicate division. Very good, okay? So in dividing or in division, we may use this symbol, okay? Or uh, pwede rin yung uh, bar, no? A bar that also indicates division, okay? So let's translate the first one. The quotient of a number and three. So if we represent a number as x, so it should be x divided by three. Or it may be written as x over three. Okay, next we have four divided by a number. If we represent the number here by what letter? By M. Let's say M for Mama Lou. 4 divided by a number. So we have 4 divided by M or that is 4 over M. Okay, so let's try to translate the following verbal phrases. Let's try to have more examples. Okay, number 1. Three more than twice a number. Three more than twice a number. So this uh, number or this example involves two. Two operations. Three more than. Okay, we have here the more than. Okay, then we have twice. More than is addition. And twice is multiplication. Okay, three more than twice a number. Let's represent the number here as x. Okay, let's be um, consistent. X na lang muna yung gamitin natin. Anyway, hindi naman na madalas na babanggit si x. Dahil x na nga. Okay, so three more than twice a number. Okay, so we represent twice a number. So that is 2x. That means 2 times x. 3 more than. Okay, twice a number. So that is 2x plus 3. Okay, so that's 3 more than twice a number. Okay, next, number 2. The sum of a number, okay, we have the sum of a number. Let's say we represent that number as x, the sum of a number, and three times another number. Okay, we have here another, another number. So let's represent the first number as x and the other number as y, okay? So, this one suggests, okay, again, two operations. The sum, tapos meron tayo, and three times another number, multiplication, okay? So, we have the sum of a number, so a number which is represented by x, the sum of a number and, and what, and what? Three times another number, which we will represent by y. So, x plus three times the other number. Okay? So, that is x plus three y. Again, when we read it, the sum of a number and three times another number. Okay, let's move on to number three. One number times the sum of two and another number. Again, we have two numbers here. 
one number times the sum of another number. Let's again use X and Y, okay? Now, let's look at the operations. We have times and then the sum. Okay, so this will be using two operations, okay? One number, so we agreed before that we will use the first number as X. So, one number times, okay? Times, we can use this one, this symbol, times the sum of two and another number. The sum of two and another number. This is the sum of two and another number. So, one number times the sum of two and another number. Or we can just delete this uh, multiplication symbol, this dot here. We can just write x, then we have the parenthesis 2 plus y. Okay? So, we read this as one number times the sum of two and a number. Okay, so let us now use this verbal phrases or this algebraic expression to a real life problem, okay, or a real life situation. So I will just write the uh, given and then we will translate. Okay, so we have here the real life application. So, you're buying some ball pens and some memo pads. Each ball pen costs 12 pesos and each memo pad costs 15 pesos. Write an algebraic expression for the total cost. Then, use the expression to find the cost of each purchase. Letter A, 3 ball pens and 2 memo pads. Letter B, two ball pens and three memo pads. Okay, so how, how are we going to answer this? Okay, so let us first, or uh, let us begin by uh, using a problem solving plan. So, paano po yung problem solving plan? So, let us begin by writing our verbal model. Okay, since you're buying ball pens and memo pads, okay? So, our verbal model should be, okay, cost per ball pen times, kung ilan yung ball pen na binili, no? Times the number of ball pens, okay? Plus, yung isa pang binili ay memo pads. So, cost per memo pad times the number of memo pads. So, this is our verbal model. Okay, so the second step in uh, our problem solving plan is you are going to assign labels no, to the model. So, magbigay tayo ng label. So, what's the cost per ball pen? Magkano isang ball pen? So, each ball pen costs 12 pesos. So, we have here 12 times the number of ball pen. Okay. So, let's represent the number of ball pen as B. No, ball pen. Since ball pen. Okay. Plus, the cost per memo pad. How much is one memo pad? Each memo pad costs 15. Okay, 15. And let's represent the, num uh, the number of memo pads as M. So, M. So, we have here now verbal expression. So, 12B plus 15M. Okay, so now let us use, to, uh, let us use this algebraic model to answer the two problems here or the two questions here, no? You, you are going to use the expression, so you're going to use this expression to find the cost of each purchase. So, letter A, so we're going to find the total cost, 
Okay, so the total cost is equal to, for letter A, we have three ball pens, no? And since our, our um, uh, uh, expression is 12B plus 15M, so 12 ball, uh, 3 ball pens and 2 memo pods. So using our expression here, 12B plus 15M. Okay, so sabi, 3 ball pens and 2 memo pads. Okay, so therefore, 12 times B is the number of ball pens. Remember, number of ball pens. 12 times 3 plus 15. And M is the number of memo pads. How many memo pads? Okay, 2. 15 times 2. So, 12 times 3 is 36 plus 15 times 2 is 30. So, what is 36 plus 30? So, that is equal to, alright, that's equal to 66. So, the total cost of 3 ball pens and 2 memo pods is 66 pesos. Okay? Now, for letter B, so use the expression to find the total cost of each purchase. So, for letter B, let's again use this expression, 12B plus 15M. B is the number of ball pens and M is the number of memo pods. So, for letter B, what's the total cost? So, total cost, I will write my answer here. Okay, let's I just write my answer here. San ba, san ba? Dito, here na lang. So, total cost for letter B, we have 12B plus 15M. 12, ano sabi? Ilan daw sa letter B? 2 ball pens. So, 12 times 2 plus 15, okay, 3 memo pads times 3. We have here 24 plus 45. And 24 plus 45 is equal to... 69 pesos so guys that is how easy no uh translating verbal expressions to algebraic expressions so it's easy so you can answer a real life problem if you know how to translate verbal expressions or verbal phrases to algebraic expressions so i hope you learned something from our lesson today so this is a prerequisite no before natin matutunan yung solving linear equation you should know first how to translate verbal expressions to algebraic expression so i hope you learned something today so until next video Bye, guys!